Photons are very interesting in that they always travel at the speed of light and that makes sense because quantum theory of light tells us that light consists of photons and that implies that photons travel at the speed of light. Now, photons are never stationary. You will never find a photon that is simply at rest. Even when a photon collides, let's say with an electron, what happens is the energy stored in a photon is transferred to that electron and the photon simply ceases to exist. Now, how exactly do we define the momentum and the energy of a particle that is traveling at, a, at the speed of light or at a speed that is very close to the speed of light? Now, at very high speeds, the equations for momentum and for energy that we used for macroscopic objects do not quite hold for particles that travel at the speed of light. To calculate the momentum of a particle that travels at a very high speed, we have to use an equation that is known as a relativistic equation. So, the relativistic equation for momentum for a particle that's traveling at a very high speed v is given by the following equation. Now, what exactly is a relativistic equation? Where does it come from? Where it comes from, the special theory of relativity. And we'll derive and talk more about this equation when we discuss the theory of relativity. For now, it's sufficient to say that this is the equation that gives us the momentum of a particle that is traveling at a very high speed at a speed that is close to the speed of light. Now notice one interesting fact about this equation. Notice if we're dealing with a macroscopic object, an object that is traveling at a velocity that is very low compared to the velocity of uh, light, let's say with a velocity of 10 meters per second, this fraction, v squared divided by c squared, we have a very small number divided by a very large number, and this is approximately equal to zero. So 1 minus a very small number is approximately equal to 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So if we're dealing with a very large object that is moving very slow compared to the speed of light, this equation simply amounts to m times v divided by 1, which is the equation for momentum for macroscopic objects. However, let's suppose now we're dealing with the photon. So we want to determine what the mass of the photon is. So we know what the velocity of a photon is and we know that the speed of light is in fact the constant. So the speed of our photon v is equal to c. So this v becomes a c and this v also becomes a c. So let's replace this v with a c and let's also replace this v with a c. Now let's look at the following fraction. So c squared divided by c squared is simply equal to 1. Now 1 minus 1 gives us 0 and the square root of 0 is 0. So we see that if our photon has a mass m then we get mc divided by 0, which is simply infinity. So that implies that if a photon has mass, then the momentum of our photon is equal to infinity. Now, of course, that cannot be true. So since the momentum of a photon cannot be infinitely large, we conclude that the mass of a photon must be zero. Now, previously we said that photons carry a certain quantity of energy and the energy is equal to H Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency of the vibration of our photon. Now, we can also define the relativistic energy of a photon in the same way that we define the relativistic momentum of our photon. So, 
whenever we're dealing with particles that are traveling at very high speeds, at speeds that are very close to the speed of light, the following equation holds true. Now we're going to derive this equation once again when we talk about the theory of relativity. For now, it's sufficient to say that this equation gives us the total energy of our particle in terms of its momentum p. So the square of the total energy of our particle is equal to this quantity plus this quantity where m is the mass of the particle c is the speed of light and p is the momentum of our particle. So since a photon is considered to be a particle, let's use this equation to find what the momentum of our photon is. So first let's recall from this result we know the mass of a photon must be zero. So since m equals zero this equation becomes this cancels out and e squared is equal to p squared multiplied by c squared. Now if we take the square root of both sides we see the energy of our photon is equal to p the momentum multiplied by c the speed of light. So let's rearrange this equation and solve for our momentum. The momentum of our photon is equal to the energy that it carries divided by the speed of light, the speed of that photon. Now from this equation we see that energy is equal to h multiplied by f and the frequency is equal to the speed of light c divided by the wavelength lambda. So we can replace frequency with c divided by lambda. Notice c appears on top and bottom and they cancel out and we see that the momentum of a photon is equal to Planck's constant h divided by lambda, the wavelength of the light that carries those photons. So let's see the following example in which we're going to calculate our uh, momentum of the photon using this equation. So, a certain 100 watt light bulb releases light with a wavelength of 550 nanometers. Calculate the momentum of a single photon that is produced by the following light bulb. So we basically want to apply this equation. The momentum of a photon P is equal to H Planck's constant divided by lambda. So Planck's constant is 6.626 times times 10 to the negative 34 joules multiplied by second and our wavelength is 550 times 10 to the negative 9 meters and we get a momentum of about 1.2 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms multiplied by meter divided by seconds.